Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause, and today we are going to be interviewing Dr. Greg Winteregg. He is all about helping folks learn how to have fun at work. Because let's face it, a lot of us go to work every single day and we hate it so much that it's actually making us sick. In fact, I would arguably say that most patients that are stressed out, hate in life, depressed, coming into my office not feeling good, it's because they're not at a job that they love, they're not fulfilled, they're not feeling the purpose of their gig. And so Dr. Winter Egg is a former practicing dentist who became a client of a management company and loved the management side of things so much that when offered a partnership at the company, he had to jump on it. He helped the dental practice management company become arguably the largest dental practice management company in North America. And now he's helping folks all over online with his own company, Matterhorn Business Development. Then... If that wasn't enough, he's just finished writing his book, Fun at Work, due to launch late March or early April of 2019, which is, of course, what we are going to talk about today. So welcome, Dr. Greg. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. Hey, Janine. Thanks. I'm really excited to be here with you today. Well, it's a pleasure because I think one of the biggest things that I find in my practice is that if folks are not having fun at work, they're not feeling fulfilled they get sick and things just spiral out of control from there. So I thought, gosh, you know, this is great. It's a great book, great concept. And I really want to hear more from you about how folks can have more fun at work. Well, you bet. And, um, you know, at this point in my life, I'm 63 years old and um, I've really been in business since I was little because my mom and dad owned a restaurant along with my aunt and uncle. And so I was kind of raised in an entrepreneur entrepreneurial environment. And if you're talking about health, um, <laughs> kind of when you own your own business, we just didn't allow ourselves to get sick, mm-hmm. you know, but things happen. But I'll tell you what I found over the years. Um, like in my dental practice, uh, my staff was amazing and we really loved being there and we loved helping the patients. And rather than give my staff sick days, you know, you get paid for a day when you're ill I gave my staff wellness days. So if if you worked an entire quarter and weren't sick, you got an extra day's pay. Hmm. And here's what I noticed. I mean, first of all, my staff was, was rarely ill. And, you know, when we, when I started the practice a little smaller, I had three staff and it grew up to uh, about 10, but my staff didn't get sick. And (laughs) then the same thing as like I missed in uh, 12 and a half years of, of practicing, I missed a half a day of work. And then I head off into my next career, the dental practice management company, and it's the same thing. And uh, I've had a chance now, uh, I'm sort of semi-retired from the dental practice management company. I I still do seminars there and and the online video training, et cetera. But um, I'm able to kind of look back and I'm like, well, I think there's no, it's no accident that I have absolutely loved everything I have done. It's not like I've ever felt like I have to drag myself out of bed and go to work to get a paycheck, et cetera. And so, yes, I have worked for myself, but it's always been doing something where I was really happy to be helping a lot of people. And what I've noticed, uh, like, for example, when I hired my my dental office manager, I hired a patient. She had never worked in a dental practice before, but she was she always kept her six month visits. You always look forward to her coming into the office and she was always happy. And so when she, she was kind of complaining about the job that she had and the company had been sold out, and I said, well, what if you came to work for me? And she says, well, I've never worked in a dental office. And I said, well, here's my vision. I want to expand the practice at multiple locations. You can help me kind of like you can run the empire kind of a thing. And she got all excited about it. <laughs> and as I look back now, like my staff just really, they liked working for me, but they loved the, the profession of dentistry. 
Mm-hmm. And a dental practice management company, we get results that are second to none. We, we can help a, a dental practice double and triple over the span of two or three years. And they don't have to operate off of uh, low fee plans and that kind of thing. And our staff, we have 78 employees now in that dental practice management company. And our staff just love it because we get such awesome results. So I believe it's no accident that if you have employees and you have a vision and a purpose and everybody is aligned following that purpose, then everyone really does enjoy coming to work. And of course, there's moments of pressure and stress, but then it's not like every day, every week, every month is just a grind. And so, uh, you know, our staff rarely get sick and we we really do have a lot of fun at work. And I think it's because our basic purpose is to help people and everybody there is more interested in helping people. And then it's almost, oh, by the way, here's how much we're going to pay you kind of a thing. And we have production games and bonus games and, you know, we we keep it, uh, we definitely really keep it fun. That's huge. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's going to be some stressors, but I find that in my practice, I mean, I have some patients coming in and it's like, they're like, and this happened at work and that happened at work right. and this. And I'm like, right. oh my God, you know, you're like, well, no wonder you're sick. Well, and here's what's interesting because the fun at work, the book is actually a book for business owners, managers, CEOs, senior execs, junior execs, et cetera. And what I hear chronically is, you know, good help is just really hard to find. Mm-hmm. It's hard to find a good blah, blah, blah. And I will tell you, I've never had that problem. And like I say, at, at 63 now, I'm able to kind of look back over my life and what I've done correctly and what I've done incorrectly. And I really don't have problems finding good staff. I just start talking to people and tell them about what I'm doing. And I'm always looking for, you know, like, like I love enterprise rental car. <laughs> and when I go to enterprise, those people are the best. They are the most helpful. Every time I go there, I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I met three people today and I would hire any of them. And I've <laughs> always got my radar out like that, you know, for what, you know, at Starbucks, at a restaurant, where, wherever <laughs> it might be. And uh, I'm always giving out my card, you know, hey, you're ever looking for a job, et cetera, give me a call. And uh, I've had some of those contacts turn into to awesome employees because I'm looking for attitude. I'm looking for people who are already having fun at work. And then I, I bring them on board with, with my vision. <laughs> and um, I believe, circling back around to the point, I believe that the executives are responsible for making it fun. And it, it is, I call it a, a tight wire rope act across Niagara Falls because <laughs> you have the pressure of making the profit. You have the pressure of providing customer service. You have to get the marketing out. The sales department has to close and you're hiring, et cetera. And so there's all of that, but you have to keep it fun. Yeah. You really do. And, and for me, it, the, the fun part is focusing on the result of the company. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, like I have a patient who comes in and they're scared to death of the dentist and they haven't been to the dentist in 20 years. And we get them through the process, multiple appointments, and, you know, nobody likes going to the dentist, me included. But when we're all done and we've taken care of them, they're in tears and they hug us and they come back every six months. That's validating and rewarding, you know, and the same thing at the practice management company. You know, we, we take a doctor who's the practice is for sale. They're nearly bankrupt. And within six months, they're doubled in hiring an associate. I mean, that's fun. And so, yes, it is fun getting that product and getting paid for that product. But for me, it all boils down to what is the basic purpose of your organization? Mm -hmm. What is the basic purpose of the company? And for me, that is about the people. That's about the public. It's about the customers. How are we going to service them? And that is focusing outward from the business. So, you know, somebody, uh, you can ask somebody, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to do something where I can make a million dollars. Okay, well, then my next question is, that's awesome. Who are you going to help? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to help? How are you going to help them? What problem are you going to help them solve? 
and everything for me aligns after that. So for me, the basic purpose of the company is who you're helping. Like if we just take you as an example, your health fix, what, what are you looking for? You're looking to help people have a healthier life. You're a naturopathic doctor. Why did you get into that? You want to have, you want to help people live longer, live healthier in the most natural way possible. And that really excites you. That's what gets you out of bed in the morning, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to make money to pay your bills. True. But if you start focusing on the money, then the customer kind of falls out of the equation. And mm -hmm. then they have a tendency to, quote, unquote, just become a number. So I believe that everything flows. Everything starts from the top. And what is the basic purpose of the company? What is the basic purpose of the organization? Absolutely. Absolutely. The purpose is a huge thing that you bring up because I find that when people have lost purpose, they tend to also get sick. And when they've lost the exactly. vision in their individual companies or why they chose to work for a particular industry or whatnot, I think they mm -hmm. feel like, you know, oh, I'm just here to make the money. And exactly. You start to forget what are you serving? What purpose are you Serving for you got leaders. it. And the, the moment it becomes just about all the money, it, it's just a bit of a mess. And, you know, you you see folks and, and they go out there and they grab the golden ring and everything is awesome and they've got everything they could ever have, but their family life is a mess and their employees are upset or unhappy. And so that's not what this is about. This is about having it all. Mm -hmm. So... My viewpoint is you will make a lot of money the more people you help and you have to help them solve a problem your product or service provides. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, and I actually have – oh, go ahead. I'll let you go. Oh, um, I think you had, no, you had something better. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, in, in the book, I'm actually making um, – there's a, there's a free PDF download that comes, and you can do exercises at the end of every chapter. There's a chapter on money. There's a pat chapter on purpose, uh, a chapter on your strategic game plan. And you can sit there, and I like teaching. So for me, this is, this is as much a workbook as anything else. And I actually have a drill because you talk about, well, you need to have a purpose. What's your purpose? And then, you know, I sit there like, wow, what is my purpose? And you, you can kind of um, start looking inward way too much, and you kind of get stuck. So I just like to throw out one exercise from the book. Okay. And you and I can just, we, we can play along with it a little bit here. All right. Sounds cool. So the exercise is to fill in the blank. All right. Mm -hmm. My purpose is to help blank who live in blank achieve blank by providing blank. So if we just talk to you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Krause, your purpose is to help. How would you fill in the first blank? help people. <laughs> yep. Very it's That's very broad, a, very but very broad. Yes. Yep. Who live in the Tacoma area? Good. Achieve what? Optimal wellness. Optimal wellness, right? By providing what? Natural medicine services and acupuncture. There we go. Easy. And easy. And and so now you can take this, and what I did in my dental office is I, I had our mission statement, and it was printed in every treatment room. And while the patient was sitting there, it was right there on the wall. They could look out the window, or they could look at our purpose, and it was framed and all hanging on the wall. Oh, nice. And I recommended to companies of manufacturing, you know, I was like, create a huge banner and hang it from the ceiling in the warehouse. You know, it's just like everybody knows why they are there today. So for you, you wake up in the morning because it's very clear to you that you want to help people who live in the Tacoma area have optimal wellness by providing op uh, naturopathic medicine. And that's that's what turns you on. That's what excites you. And in every job interview, I would tell you to, to bring that up. And and when I'm doing an interview for for a, a new position, I just start off with here's here's my purpose and here's my game. And there are some people who go. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's awesome. This is just exactly what I've been looking for. 
but then you throw that out to somebody else. And I'm like, oh, that sounds nice. So, um, do you have health and dental benefits? <laughs> and it's just kind of like it's they, they they either select themselves in or they select themselves out mm-hmm. by how they respond to my vision. Awesome. And I've even done some interviews and tell people like, listen, I'm not ready for you right now. Um, I'm really not in a position where I could afford you. I'm gonna put your resume over here. This happened two weeks ago. And guy looked at me and says, I'll work for you for free. I'm like, really? <laughs> and so we worked out a, a commission structure that he's going to be doing this. And when the company gets closed, he's going to get a bigger percentage than if he was on salary. Or, and he's just happy as a lark. And so you'll have amazing people just start to, to walk into to your environment. And you'll, you'll be a magnet for <laughs> for people who are just aligned with with your goal and your purpose and it just makes work so much fun that's huge yeah i'm like all right i wrote it down so i'm like all right that's it i'm gonna put that up on my walls as well and uh, keep that going you know when you you have a day when you're not waking up and you're not really feeling it and so you know you just reread your purpose and like Oh yeah, yeah. There was that patient last week, the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're like, okay, okay, I'm feeling a little better. Let's get a shower and get going here. You know, so uh, dental school is very hard. <laughs> it, it's it's four years. It's really hard. And I got through it because what I had actually done is my dentist had invited me when I was a freshman in high school to come to his office and just watch him on a Saturday morning. He was suggesting I go to go to dental school. And I didn't know anything about it, but I went and I watched. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that looks like that would be interesting. People have this problem come in and they walk out and their problem is fixed. And then as a client at the management company, I was applying it well. And so one of the partners came and said, you know, this fellow over here is having a bit of a problem. I think you could really help him. So I started helping other people like, whoa, that was fun because 30 days later they got the result. And so for me, it just uh, has been kind of like a path of just helping people with, with what I'm good at. And if their purpose is aligned with my purpose, then it really just goes swimmingly. It's a lot of fun. I can imagine. I mean, I think it's a really good point (laughs) that you brought up about, you know, reminding yourself when, I mean, because there's going to be days where you wake up and you're like, uh, you know, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) You've probably had this back when you were practicing. I mean, because sometimes there's days where like, it's like it comes in waves where everything goes wrong, where, yeah. you know, X, Y, and Z happen. And then you're like, oh, I'm the worst doctor ever. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. And it's, <laughs> and you're yeah, like, like oh. there's a bad moon out there or something. And every Jupiter and Mars are not aligning in the right direction. So yeah. what keeps you going? Because, I mean, my goodness, I'm 63. I've been through recessions and quote unquote depressions and you know whatever goes on in Washington and real estate and gasoline and and so you know what keeps me going is like I'm helping people no matter what happens. Mm-hmm. Life life is going on no matter what happens mm-hmm. out there and I just always have to focus on my basic purpose, the purpose of my companies and, and exactly what we are trying to accomplish with the clients and the rest of, of the world is going to influence that. But then if we really have that purpose of helping people and, you know, let's take you for, for example, um, I'm sure you recommend supplements to folks, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so what happens if one of your favorite supplements, all of a sudden the company goes bankrupt and you're like, oh, holy smokes, uh, that just happened. And that was your favorite, you know, whatever (laughs) supplement it was. Well, you don't lock up the shop. Nope. You, nope. have, you have your purpose. You So now you get online, you dig, you talk to reps, you find the next best thing or maybe something better. And Well, you do that all because of your basic purpose is to help people. Absolutely. So for me, it's that basic purpose that gets us through the tough times. And if it's all, if it's all about money, it's not going to be worth it. It's going to be like ditch digging or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> you know, cleaning out chicken coops or something, you know, it's, it's, it's just going to seem like a real grind. Yeah. But if you've got that purpose and you're really there to focus on helping people, then that's what keeps you going through the hard times. I absolutely agree. I absolutely awesome. agree. Now, awesome. let's talk a little bit about folks that maybe feel that they're not in control of their own destiny. They're not the, mm-hmm. the upper level management. Maybe they're mid-level management or maybe they're lower on the totem pole. And 
you know, kind of your, your mention to me when I had my question sent over to you, you had mentioned about working in a trailer factory and yeah. you were playing with how you could, you know, do things faster and easier. <laughs> and I, you know, I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, I think a lot of people that maybe are in entry level jobs that they just got the job because the purpose was I need to, I need to survive. I think yep. one of the things that perhaps might be useful is, is using some of your technique here in terms of how could you take your job and make it have a purpose for you to get by till you get to your next step. Do you want to speak a little bit more on, you know, your trailer factory experience? Absolutely. So, um, I, I mean, I had to have a summer job and sure. I had to make some money, uh, between, you know, the semesters between the years. And, uh, what I was able to do is take my particular assigned task and just make fun out of it. So, um, my job in the trailer factory was to put the front on. Mm. So the columns and the lights and put in the bay window or whatever, while other guys in my unit were putting the insulation on the side and the siding and the tail lights and all that on. And so initially when I showed up, I was the last guy done in the unit. And three people had to come help me finish. Oh, wow. and so over the span of the, the next four weeks, I tried to be the first guy done. How could I do this faster? How could I figure out how to do this better? Because I wanted to be the guy that was going to help the others. And mm -hmm. so that's how I made it a game. And for folks who are in mid-level management or, or lower on the totem pole, it's take your position and just make your area fun. I actually helped a fellow last year that was very satisfying who um, he, he was working in a, in a tech company and there were five people in his area and he wasn't able to get a raise, et cetera. And I said, listen, why don't you play the game of you being the best in your area? And then after you achieve that, then you start helping everybody else in your area be as good as you. And so it was actually in Detroit. I did a seminar up there. I went back six months later. He had done exactly what I told him. Nice. And he said, I, I just got a promotion. <laughs> so what he did was, even though he was way down the quote unquote food chain, he took responsibility for the five people in his area. He figured out a few things, he talked to his supervisor. They restructured a couple of things. Then he started teaching everybody else in his area. And they came up and offered him a promotion with more pay. So it kind of flows back to what I was talking about. He made his area fun and he made himself more productive. Then he started teaching the people around him and management looked down and said, whoa, this guy's a real leader. Let's offer him an increase of pay and a leadership position, et cetera. But it all started with him. He actually, he actually controlled it. So even though you feel like maybe you're further down or too far down the food chain, um, I don't agree. You can always take whatever you are doing, your area, your task, and you can always turn it into a game and make it fun. Absolutely. I, I can't agree more. I think we should talk awesome. more about this fun stuff Go ahead. And, and what you do in terms of fun. Cause I saw some of your bonus games that you were talking about for staff yeah. and things of that nature. Tell, tell us about that. Well, we always have, we always have to have games as far as I'm concerned. And it's the CEO's job, the senior executive's job, to make sure that the games align with the goals and, and the, the people in the area. And I'll just give you a real quick example in my dental office. So um, we, we had a monthly bonus game that was based on the amount of collections that came in. And then we had other quarterly games that we played if we hit particular quarterly targets. Um, one one quarterly reward was everybody got $300 and we went to the mall, we went to South Bend and we went to the mall. We had this big shopping spree. But one year we did um, an annual game and we were going to take a trip with everybody being able to take their spouse or significant other on this trip. So that was going to cost a lot of money. And it really took about three weeks to just survey everybody because some people wanted to go to Hawaii and some people wanted to go to Hilton Head. But we didn't stop until we found the location and the game that was going to motivate everyone. Mm. Then we played that game. And do you think we won that game? I would guess so. 
we absolutely won that game. <laughs> and so, and, and it was something we had the thermometer on the wall. We had to have a certain amount of bonus money that came in and it took, you know, a lot of work. There was even uh, a time or two when we came in on a Friday and we didn't work on Friday and we counted that towards the bonus fund. And so it was just always, it was just always fun. So I think it's upper level management's job to make sure that there's a game, but not a game that is dictated down to the staff, but a game that where the staff are surveyed and you get uh, some of your better game players in an area they say, so what would motivate this group? And I mean, one monthly game, and I don't even remember what the game was, but it was Blizzard's a Dairy Queen <laughs> <laughs> because we had, we had a, 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 in the summer, it's hot in Northern Indiana and we like Blizzard's. Somebody came, what well, would we play this game? And if we win that game, everybody gets a Blizzard. So uh, it doesn't have to cost the company, you know, a jillion dollars, but it just has to be something that everybody can talk about. And it's sort of like watching the scoreboard in a basketball game. It'd be very boring if there was no scoreboard. Mm -hmm. It's just people running up and down, working at, at throwing up the basketball. But the scoreboard is what makes it a game and a time limit. And, you know, you have numbers that you track. And so we, we had a game board back in the staff lounge. And so whatever organization I'm running, there's always going to be a game. There's going to be a deadline. There's going to be rewards. And, and that's part, for me, of what makes it fun. Oh, man. I mean, who doesn't love a blizzard? Exactly. <laughs> I don't care who you are. I don't care how natural you eat. I'm sorry. I will right. always stop for a blizzard. <laughs> That's right. And it's got way too many carbs in it and all of that stuff. But, hey, as long as you're not doing it once a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's And you're, you're just playing the game, then let's let our hair down and have some fun. And, you know, really, who doesn't smile when it's something from – your childhood that you remember, you know, say you don't have Dairy Queen, which I don't really know anywhere in the U.S. that doesn't have Dairy Queen, but right. whatever, if, you know, if you're not right. listening in the U.S. and you have an ice cream shop, I'm pretty sure that most people are motivated by what made them happy when they were a kid. That's right. And, and let me tell you what always works with, with women, and you can <laughs> confirm or deny this, <laughs> shoes and jewelry always work. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Shoes I... and jewelry always work. So there was a there was a, a shoe store in our little town of ten thousand called the Little Red Shoe House, <laughs> and the most expensive pair of shoes at the Little Red Shoe House was nineteen ninety nine, and so we had one game, and I don't even again I don't remember the game, what the game was, but the prize was a your choice of a pair of shoes at the Little Red Shoe House, and I mean we won that monthly game in about two weeks. Oh my so, goodness. Um, <laughs> So that now it's always uh, I consider it my responsibility to make sure that we're playing a game that everybody can get behind. Oh, absolutely! No, I think I think that's important because I find that you know I haven't always been a naturopath. I worked in let's let's put it out there. I worked for Minolta Copiers when I first uh -huh. got, was out of college, and I had to sell copiers, and I hated it. Um, yeah. I really had a hard time trying to find the fun in it. And really yeah. the only reason we ended up with bonuses was because of sales, but it seemed, it didn't seem genuine. It just seemed like, right. well, if you make the company more money, then you get a bonus, but there was no, like, your purpose is this. And I couldn't even exactly. think of it at that time. Now I, I can see, oh, well, I was helping people to be able to have copy solutions. But at the time I was just like, Okay. I have to, to sell more and if I make my, you know, quota, but if I don't make my quota, I'm literally shamed. And so yeah, I, understand. I think a lot of people that may be in sales or maybe in that sort of environment, I've heard with some um, folks that come into my practice that if they don't mm -hmm. make quotas, they're, they're shamed. And so then it goes, okay, how do you still maintain having fun at work or, or repurposing your, your purpose to make, you know, those quotas actually happen and not hate making the quotas happen in the same well, time. And I, I want to segue over into sales for a second. Sure. Um, because uh, I get asked a lot. So uh, what are you really looking for in a good sales rep? What, what are the characteristics that really make a great sales rep? And I, I'm not quite sure the answer that they're looking for, for, but I think my answer usually surprises people. Uh, number one, the rep has to believe in the product or service. Mm -hmm. Number one. 
and mm-hmm. I think in your coffee machine story, coffee <laughs> machines just weren't really exciting for you. Not unless I was photo- photocopying like my face and my arm and <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> I'm a kid at heart. And so, yeah, that's, I, uh, it was not my thing. That's not going to make a real good sales presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Entertaining perhaps, but no. Right. It's not, probably not going to lead to selling a coffee machine. So number one, you have to believe in, believe in the product or service because if you're there just to sell something to get money, it's not going to be fun. Yes. And number two, you have to be excited that that product or service is going to help someone. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's there's a, the, a phrase in selling that I'm sure you've heard, ABC, mm-hmm. always be closing. <laughs> yes, I have. Right? Right. <laughs> so then if, if, if I'm, if I, no matter what I'm selling, and I'm approaching you, I have to always be closing if I have that attitude. Mm-hmm. And there's a quota to me, and I'm fine with sales managers putting pressure down on the sales force. That's, that's part of yeah. business. It's part of the game. But if I'm approaching you as a customer or a potential client, and in my mind, I'm already sizing you up on how I'm going to close you, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm completely dead. It's not going to happen because I don't even know anything about you. If right. we go back to the copy machine story, I mean, I don't know. Maybe your brother sells copy machines. I don't know anything about you, and I'm already trying to size up, you know, what kind of copy machine you could afford by how you're dressed or how big your company is. Or, but, so for me, number one, you have to believe in the product or service, and number two, you have to be interested in helping the customer solve a problem. Mm-hmm. So sales is not me jamming a copy machine down your throat. If I'm selling copy machines, first of all, I have to I have to really believe that my machine is going to beat the competition on at least you know two or three or four items that they don't have or whatever. So I have to believe that my copy machine is going to help you. And secondly, then in ten minutes, I have to be able to find out: Do you have a problem that my machine is going to solve? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm saying there. Well, I have to close this deal. I have this quota, et cetera. And so then I'm just going to grind along for two or four or six or eight hours, I'll tell my my sales boss, that, that my sales manager, that, oh, yeah, I really think it's going to go. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have no idea how I'm going to get this closed. But you know what? My time is much better spent. If in 15 minutes, I find that your brother sells you copy machines. And then I say, well, hey, do you know anybody that your brother hasn't contacted yet? My machine has this or this. Can you refer me to someone? Because I'm out of there in 15 minutes. I'm not going to waste six or eight hours. Right. Trying to sell you something, right? So I'm moving on, and so for me, it's a matter of basic purpose again. Mm-hmm. Finding the customers that I know I can help, and then just move on. And then when I talk to someone that I really know I can help, okay, now it might take me two hours, four hours, six hours to, you know, get the right deal or the right price or the right maintenance program or whatever to really help them. So the two characteristics I'm always looking for is when we're in a rep is do you believe in my product or service that, that my company offers? And then do you really like helping people solve their problems with this particular product or service? After that, everything's easy. Really, after that, everything's a piece of cake. That makes so, a lot of sense. It makes And it takes all the stress. Really, it takes all the stress out of sales. I, I have one of my clients that was struggling to sell $3,000 a month. And... He came to one of my seminars, and what, the title of the seminar is How to Sell Anything. And <laughs> I spent a couple of hours of just getting into this. Forget about the commission. Forget about the price. Forget, forget about everything. Just like talk to the person in front of you and find out what their problem is, and then marry them up with your product or service. And if it's a fit, it's a fit. If it isn't, move on to the next prospect. Mm-hmm. And he's gone from like three or 4000 a month in sales, and now he's doing fifty or 60000 a month, literally in six months. Oh, my goodness. Just by changing that one thing. It's like, oh, it just made it so easy because I used to get nervous and I used to get worried. And now I just kind of sit down and talk to people. And, hey, this is what I do. Do you have a problem with such and so? Oh, you do really? Well, did you know that this product? And so it's just like it, it just took all the pressure out of it and, and all of the scripting and the introversion. And so uh, that's where I think sales has really you know, gone in the wrong direction. Because it's all about technique and quotas and commissions and sales and whatever rewards. And like there do need to be rewards. But like, wait a minute, what's the product? What's the service? Does, is it going to help them or isn't? If it's going to help them, great. Then we'll spend hours. But if it's not going to help them, we're going to move on and find somebody that will help them. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And I think that it can just appeal. Takes, just takes the stress and the pressure off of it. Yeah, yeah. No, and I think it can be applied to a lot of different aspects, not just sales, just, you know, for a lot of folks in terms of evaluating their job and evaluating, you know, do do they do they have a right fit for their job? You know, can they live with You got it. You know, the purpose of the business. Can they, you know, is it is it aligned? And you know, yeah. I know a lot of folks are trapped in jobs that that's where they're at and they've got to kind of do plan B where, where you know, they go back to the purpose and see if they can, you know, get behind it. And if they can't get behind it, this is when it's time to find something else so you don't kill yes. yourself slowly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have another exercise that I do with, with, with folks who are not happy with doing what they're doing. Yeah. And one of the questions I ask is like, if, if you were just doing something for fun, what would you do? <laughs> if you could get paid for doing something fun, what would you do? And uh, in my book, I actually have a story where this fellow was at a, a job and he had a second job and he wasn't happy. And so I go through this scenario where I'm like doing a fictitious interview. <laughs> and I said, well, if, if you could do anything and get paid for it, what would you do? Man, I'd hunt. Hmm. And so I go through this whole thing where I – He's a really good hunter, and uh, he always knows where the deer are, and he always gets his quotas, and et cetera, et cetera. So then he goes through the whole exercise, and he ends up starting his own business, and he becomes a guide, and then he does shooting lessons when it's not hunting season. And, and so you really just find something you love, and, and as long as that product serves a need for the people, and solves a problem for, for the people, then you laser in on those people and you have a business. Absolutely. Absolutely key here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so, uh, I think it's too simple. <laughs> well, I think it's too simple. I think, I think what people get caught up in and I myself, I'm, I'm going to fully admit that at times with my practices, I've been stuck in the, I need to just make money to survive. And I think when people mm -hmm. get stuck in the, I need to make money to survive mode, you start to make yourself sick because mm -hmm. you're just, you're not enjoying what you do. You're just, just spinning your wheels as I would think of it. You got it. And then it's absolutely no fun. Mm -hmm. Then it's a grind. I mean, come on. Is there anyone out there that hasn't pretended a stomach ache so they didn't have to go to school? <laughs> I would be shocked. I would be shocked if someone has I would be shocked if anyone could honestly answer that question. No. So the same things happens at work. And, you know, you're in healthcare. I know that people can make themselves have a fever. I know they can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so then that's where I believe it, it all goes back to the purpose and enjoying what you do. And uh, if you don't like what you're doing, I mean, this is your life. This is your shot. You know, this is, I mean, and it can have a great pension plan attached to it. But is, do you really want to work for 30 or 40 years at something that you don't like so you get a great, you know, end of your life for the last <laughs> I don't know, five or 10 or 15. I mean, I, for the pension in the 401k, I mean, for me, I'm never going to retire. Yeah. I'm 63 years old and I can promise you I'm never going to retire because I have too much fun doing my work and I have to put that in air quotes work because <laughs> what, what I do is absolutely not work. It's so much fun that it's, it's more fun than golf. It's more fun than fishing. It's more fun than snow skiing, even though I'll do some of that stuff you know, as a, as a break or a breather. But, uh, so my advice to everyone is find something that you enjoy and help people solve a problem. I mean, look at YouTube, look at, look at the online businesses that have, have sprouted up just as somebody saying, uh, here's this problem and here's how I solve it. And, you know, I met a fellow a couple of years ago who, who has about a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers, wow. and what he does is he he has videos on how to rebuild engines. Hmm. You know, That's here's cool. this here's this engine. Now, first thing, what are you going to use for this engine? You're going to put a truck and you're going to tow something with it. You're going to go to the drag strip with it. So, if you're going to rebuild this engine here, and and he 
he's got, I looked the other day, he's got like 98,000 followers. Wow. And so he, he's just doing something that he likes. And I interviewed him. He's like, man, my day job really blows, but I really love this thing with your engines. And so I don't think he has a day job anymore. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, if you have that many followers, you better be monetizing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. And how, you know, the that point, is huge. <laughs> that's, that's the exact that's the exact conversation that he and I had because he really, he, and, and he's just so comfortable. He's so natural. He's in his garage. He's got his t-shirt on. His hair's kind of messed up, but man, this guy's all about engines. And so he's doing what he loves and he really does have fun at work. So I would just encourage people to just, if you're not happy, see how you can take your job and make it a game. And if that's not possible, all right, well then you're going to have to survive that job for six months or a year or whatever, but immediately start start looking, cooking up something that you really enjoy and you really love, and then focus on the people mm-hmm. and, and help them solve a problem. And and I just want to make one other comment about this. I mean, I, I watch very little television. I mean, I, I have TV so I can watch athletic events and, and movies. <laughs> but one show that I catch every time I can is Shark Tank. Because <laughs> it. it's all about business and and here's just start watching shark tank there are people every person who walks through those doors to pitch the sharks really believes in their product or service Mm -hmm. and as you're watching it what kind of problem is it solving now it's always solving a problem but here's the key is the problem in their head oh this is really an amazing product or service and the next question the sharks say is what are your sales Mm mm-hmm does anybody else think it's cool? Right? True. Like, does it really solve a problem? Mm-hmm. And it's at that moment, you 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 know, do they have a million dollars in sales, or have they put a hundred thousand in to get five thousand dollars worth of sales? And they're trying to pitch the sharks as to how awesome this is at solving a particular problem, but it's not really solving a problem. So I suggest if you feel like you're stuck. Do something that you love and stained glass. Uh, I knew someone who made birdhouses and sold them at a local uh, uh, flea market and turned it into an entire business that they ended up having to get another facility for. So people like the birdhouses. And so it's just then start doing it and see if you can help them solve a problem and how can you help them solve the problem better. And then you have your own operation and you're self-employed having fun. And that is the highlight of your motto, of course. If it's not fun, I'm not doing it, is what you say. If it's not fun, I'm not doing it. (laughs) And and I think that's huge. I mean, that's really huge. And I think a lot of people need to have a little, as I call it, a come to Jesus talk with themselves. And really, are you having fun? And if you can't, you know, get yourself to have fun within the parameters of the job that you have right now, then it's time to look for one that you can have fun in. It's time to move on. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I am expecting, um, uh, the book is going to be released here soon. And okay. I'm even expecting some folks to, to have criticism about it. Like, who are you to think work can be fun? Work isn't supposed to be fun, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and, uh, first of all, they probably won't buy the book or maybe they'll buy the book just to, um, throw some digs at me, Mm. but uh, obviously they're not the right person to be reading that book because I really believe any job can be fun. And if you can't make that job fun, then it's time to find something else and and move on. That is fun. Absolutely. And then that circles back around to your whole theme of decreasing stress and and you're going to be healthier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think a lot of people of, of my purpose for folks is helping people mm-hmm. to be healthier. And you've got a website that's going to be coming up here for your book. And you were talking about some downloadables and some PDFs. Tell my crew what you're going to have on your website. Tell us what's going to be, you know, a little highlight about where they can find the sure. book and all of the details. Yeah, well, the landing page is fun at work, the book.com. And we're recording this here before the book is launched, and we're still working out the exact launch mm-hmm. date. So possibly uh, by the time this airs, the, the, the pre-release copy can be made available. And um, as you get into the book, there's going to be suggested exercises. And if you want a template, then there's going to be a free PDF download. 
and I can just like we did the template today on uh, creating a purpose. So mm -hmm. I feel like I'm an educator. I feel like I'm a trainer. Uh, I'm not really interested in uh, creating a company where I have, you know, so many hundred people giving me so many thousand dollars a month and the game is to keep them on my umbilical cord for the rest of my life. It's, that's <laughs> not how I would want to be treated. I, I want to teach people the basics and then let them go out and, and kind of create their own game. So funatworkthebook.com is the landing page. Uh, get your pre-release copy. Uh, we're still working on the exact uh, release date. I'm going to uh, have a video course that's coming out along with the book. So uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, sharing with people what's worked for me and uh, what hasn't worked for me. Because believe me, I've done it wrong just as much as I've done it right. But uh, I've been about 52% right. So that's keep, that keeps me going. <laughs> that's, that's not bad. That is not bad <laughs> at all. I, I would take that win. <laughs> Awesome. Now, one more thing, Dr. Greg, yeah. I, I'm thinking that I, well, I know because I've had some feedback from some of my Health Fix listeners that yeah. there are some folks out there that are in upper level management and there are some mm -hmm. folks who own businesses. Now, you yes. also have the management side of things. And so I yes. would love you to plug a little bit on the Matterhorn side of things just so that folks can also see that aspect if they're think you know listening to this and going i need to help my staff i need to you know yep. know how to hire better folks well the book really can be applied to anyone no matter where okay. they are in okay. an organization okay but the main focus is on upper level management and the owners nice and it does it does start at the top okay it starts at the top okay and you know we it is so easy when you've got a payroll to make and sales are down and uh, the economy takes a hiccup. It is so easy when you're at the top and you have this financial pressure and you're trying to pay your bills and there's not enough money. And so it's real easy to all of a sudden not have fun, start talking about the money, focusing on the money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, threaten if you know we don't get these numbers up there's going to be you know firing across the boards and the firing will continue until morale improves <laughs> <laughs> yes and you know it's uh it's so what i'm hoping to achieve with fun at work is get the businessmen get the owners the managers to kind of stand back and look at the company and really refocus on the purpose. And one of the exercises that I have is, yes, go go through the template and get your basic purpose. And then you call everybody underneath you together. Nice. And say, okay, so I did some reflecting over the weekend and we need to refocus. And this is our clear stated purpose. And this is going up on the wall. I had this banner printed and just like, it's an exercise of just refocusing and kind of like getting out of the, the money grind of it all because that just that sucks the life out of you. And it, it sucks the creativity out of you, too. And yeah. you're, you're much more creative when you're having fun than when you're just there. And, and just you're, you, it's happened to all of us. You're there. You're at work. Every five minutes, you're looking at your watch. The clock never seems to move. You're not creating. You're not making it fun. You're not trying to solve anybody's problem other than just getting you know tgif kind of a viewpoint so <laughs> this book definitely is for for people who own their own business the ceos the upper level management or people who actually are out there and want to start their own business okay you do the you do the exercises and it's my hope that those exercises take you through the purpose into the strategic game plan, the action plan, and then actually producing the product and the results and the profit that goes with it. Because profit is a whole chapter. You mm -hmm. have to make profit. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're just trying to be the cheapest in your industry, it's going to be super hard to make profit. It's going to be super hard to, to expand. And so I have an entire chapter on profit. I have an entire chapter on time, like more time. How do you have more time? So I have, you know, what has worked for me um, in my last uh, 35, 40 years of business. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to uh, getting the book out there and getting everybody's feedback. And uh, I definitely plan on having conferences 
uh, where everybody comes together and we can share our successes and uh, help everybody do better. Wow. That is amazing. I know I am going to go out and grab the book as soon as nice. it's released. And everybody, fun at work, the book .com. Head on over there. And yes, you know, we, we've got a little lag when, with when we're going to release this and when the book will be released. But that's okay. Keep checking back at fun at work, the book .com. And, you know, it, it can't do anything but help you. So check it that's out. Right. Dr. Greg, thank you so much. Once we have your email address, you'll get pre-release updates. Um, as as the certain chapters are available, you might get a pre-release to a certain chapter. So uh, by all means, head on over, and we're going to we're we've got the pedal to the metal to get it out to you as fast as we can. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Awesome, Dr. Janine. Dan. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Hey everybody, Dr. Janine Krause here. If you liked what you heard today, then head over to drjkrausnd.com to find my free resources and information to know when I post something new that's juicy that you might want to check out. Plus, head over to where you get your podcasts and like, subscribe, and write a review to help get the word out about me and help others at the same time to find me. It really does help and I really appreciate all of your reviews.